Let's go and let's see how this is going to go. To the bottom right hand side is going to be our blue Terran player. Let's hear it if you're going to be cheering on. The freak is keen. And down to the bottom left hand side from Team Liquid, it's our red Zerg. It is Snoot. Let's see how this best of five is going to be going. So the Snoot versus King here, best of five series. See a depot coming up towards the front here to begin with. I'm just going to be seeing a command center making some SCVs right now. Some SCVs being built on up. What a great way to start the game. Pretty boring. I mean, New Gettysburg then. So let's talk about New Gettysburg. It is going to be a uh, map which is going to be... Um, well, it, it, New Gettysburg is a map where you generally see the longer kind of games coming down because it's very hard to attack into your opponent. There's only a couple of different attack paths and both of them are fairly well defended with ramps and they're very choky as well, so it's difficult to attack throughout the game. So if you get into like the mid game in like a decentish position, you generally then do see the game going on a little bit longer. So setting up into this, we'll see Arax gas opening here from Keen to begin and he's just going to be going for a Reaper expand right from the get-go. So again, this setup and, well, across the map from Snoot is a hatch gas pool. Actually, no, it's a pool first from Snoot, which is a little bit interesting. So pool first coming in. I'm just so so used to saying hatch gas pool when it comes to TVZ, but pool first comes in right now from Snoot. So setting up into this, I'm going to be seeing a uh, gas and a hatchery going to be finishing up in a moment or two as well. So the pool first allows him to go into maybe a couple of things to run around the map and try and delay this command center. Um, it also just gives him a queen a bit earlier as well. I just, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm not too sure what exactly he wants the pool first for here on New Gettysburg because it isn't generally an aggressive map out of the Terran player. So I just wonder what his exact goal with this is. Maybe he has a follow-up where he's going to go into a Rotron very quickly and be very aggressive. That's something you can oftentimes see when you go see a pool first. So there's a possibility here. SCV comes in to scout. Queen will pop to help push this away. And I mean, immediately here, Keen is going to recognize that this is a pool first opening. So here's a rough idea of what's going to go on. Let's see what Snoot does at 100 gas. If he starts up link speed, then this is probably going to be fairly passive. And if he starts doesn't start up, then maybe a Rotron he's, is going to start it up. So link speed coming in. Pretty standard stuff right now then. So link speed on the way up. We're going to see this queen coming out to the front from Snoot. And there's going to be seeing a factory coming down. React on the way down as well from Keen. And of course, very standard follow-up for him off of the command center. We've been seeing a lot more factory-based follow-ups to the expansions uh, lately than we have been to say... You know, to, for example, I mean, we've been seeing a lot of factory-based follow-ups rather than the double racks follow-up, which has been so popular for so long. As we're just setting up into this. Just uh, getting set up and uh, ready to go. So link speed just over halfway done right now. And Numitas Carapace on the way as well. So Snoot just opens safely here, gets ready to be able to scout in the early stages as well. I'm just going to be seeing the... Um... Well, the game's setting up. Nice, slow start to what should be a fantastic TVZ series, of course. First match of today's Wardy Open. Again, we're going to be uh, going into the loser's match after this because Fia has some commitments to get to. So he wants to play his match first. Just in case, I mean, obviously, you know, if he uh, goes out, then he's out. If he wins, then he'll still stick around, but just for the chance he does go out. I'm not saying he's going to just lose his games or anything, obviously, but, you know, he just wants to make sure that if he is going to go out, at least he goes out a little bit faster so he can get to his other commitments. So, again, thank you to Fia for being here and uh, making my life simple in the schedule. And I didn't want to curse it, but, again, like I said the other yesterday, the schedule for this went cr stupidly well. I like sort of just asked the players what days work for them, more or less, between the four days I had set for the call of round of 16. I was expecting to have at least one or two days, at least, where I just wouldn't be able to get a group and I'd have to find other days. Didn't happen. Every player just was like, hey, this day works. And there was like four players for each day, more or less. And, th and that was it. We were just perfect. Uh, it was a good uh, race distribution. It was good seeding as well. They were fairly even groups. So, yeah, it was uh, really, really awesome. So that was, uh, it was like a, it was like an event organizer's dream, really, setting up the round of 16 for this event. It really was. I remember all the old events I used to run. Well, running the round of 16 was my least favorite day because it was just so, so, so horrific trying to organize it. It really was quite difficult. We're going to see some Marines dropping off right now here, guys, from Keen. He's going to start moving forward with a few Marines and Widowmine as well. Some Zerglings nearby, and they're going to run on in, get us around, and actually they will get rid of the Widowmine nice and quickly. Good defense from Snoot. Here in the early stages and behind this he'll start adding on more drones. So defense early then goes into his work account once again. Continues to set up into this. 
Lara's on the way right now from Snoot's set up into the lair and Evolution Chamber coming down too, but just the single Evo Chamber. I think one thing that's interesting to talk about from Snoot is that for a long time he played Roach Ravager and Festa and he really committed to that playstyle and then into Broodlords much later in the game as his Hive Tech transition. But that really was kind of very late in the game. Um, and you know, nowadays he plays a little bit differently. Nowadays he's playing playing a lot more sort of ultralist based styles where he plays sort of uh, Ravager Ling and goes into ultras a lot faster. So I'm intrigued to see what Snoot pulls out here today. Here do you see right now plus one Carapace is currently coming in. So plus one Carapace building his Rotor and is dropping. So definitely going to be some sort of Roach based in the mid uh, play style in the mid game. But how quickly does he go up to Hive? How quickly does he get into the ultralist cavern? Those are the questions that I'm looking out for here when we see Snoot playing today against Keen, Obviously, both of these players will play ZVP slash TVP in the next match. Of course, most of them would like to play the TVP, uh, the match against Harstam in the winner's match and get a chance to move out in first place from the group, rather than having to go through the loser's bracket, as we see. This Medivac just going to boost away off over to the right-hand side. So Medivac boosts away off over to the right. I'm going to see that Roach speed is going to be uh, starting up here as well. Infestation Pit comes down. And just continues to set up into this. A few Lings run in. We're just going to turn those away without too much of an issue here. I'm just going to be seeing this Viking from Keen. Just going to stay sat to the south side as well. So there's an infestation pit. I think we're starting to get our answer already out of Snoop. Which is going to be that he's going to play a pretty fast Hive Tech. Unless he really is just going to sit and just make Infestus straight away. But it sort of makes sense that he's only going into Carapace upgrades then. So he's sort of just going to skip the Missile upgrade for the Roaches. And just bypass that but he also doesn't go into melee upgrades either which is interesting he does have some money in the bank right now which he could maybe spend on a plus one melee actually still hitting a little bit of a supply block here oh wow pathogen glands so maybe we are going to see some investors then okay then i mean it's uh it's one of them things he definitely was always had the potential to do it and in fact he is he's zirkling here working away through these rocks they're going to get through in time just to get away from this army catching them off guard which is nice don't think keen saw these units anyways though so you go keen with a little bit of a push forwards right now and Snoot, well, he's got plenty of roaches, which he's just made. He's morphing in a few ravages here as well at this point. And we are just seeing those marines and widow mines and the medevacs as well starting to pull back towards the top side. So a few units pulling back towards the top side. And looking to see what's going to be going on. A couple of widow mines, plenty of marines. And here we go, moving forward. A couple of cross of bowels coming down. Well, I didn't actually need those. Killed off the widow mine in plenty of time, anyways. Does he see the other one? He should do with the overseer. And there's the cross of bowels to clean out. So widow mine's going to keep on falling. And it's a good cleanup here initially from Snoot, as we're going to see Medivac's loading up, so it's going to be a little bit of a drop base play from Keen now as he heads to the left-hand side. Snoot starts to head in towards his Hive Tech, and now actually with the second Evolution Chamber is going to begin his plus one missile upgrades. These two Medivacs just going to be coming across and then loading in towards the minion base. So this is going to be a little bit interesting here right now as... Oh, God... What is my PC doing today? It's uh, not having a good time, is it? Wow, that was uh, quite a lag spike for me. Infesta comes out and actually going to drop a fungal. And as we see, Snoop actually losing quite a few drones to this in the main base. So, quite a few drones starting to go down. The Medivacs will start it back away. Hive Tech is going to finish shortly. So, Hive Tech will be finishing very soon. Scan comes down and these Marines continue to push their way through these creep tumors. So, more and more creep going down here. As we'll see, these Roaches, Ravagers. Starting to push forward. Snoop not close enough to grab the fungal, but maybe he does on the medevac, so he tries it, but just not quite close enough. Keen boosting away out of there with plenty of time to spare. So Keen boosts away out of there. And as we see him continue to move around, and you know, we're just going to be seeing the Ultralist Cavern is on the way up from Snoop's Ultra Cavern being added on. I mean, he's getting ready to go into his later game tech as we see a couple of racks coming down. Wow, is this me lagging? Into Apotheosis for game number two. So down to the bottom right hand side is going to be our blue Terran player. Let's see it guys, if you're going to be cheering on. Keen. Down one game, let's see what's going to happen now as we get set to go into game number two. And to the top left hand side, our red Zerg player is Liquid Snoot. New Gettysburg was Keen's map choice and so this is Snoot's choice. And this will be a map I'm sure Snoot will be happy to play on. Lots of uh, flanking potential and stuff like that. Going to be interested to see how this is going to go. Well, I don't understand, guys. Why are we all cut into 100 and why are we all typing out the alphabet? What's what's the deal? Can someone update me? Because I had no internet. I didn't see what was going on in Twitch chat or anything. So you guys need to update me with what you guys were actually doing or something. Um, I, why, why were we counting? Why were we counting? Why are we typing out the alphabet? Will someone teach me, please? Please, please tell me. I want to know. 
Guys, we set up into game number two right now. Again, sorry for the technical issues in game number one. And, um... Obviously, it's, it was a kind of one-off thing. My uh, mum actually knocked over the router, apparently. Which is fine. Shit happens. And, um... Here we are now, and thank you guys for staying tuned and sticking with us during a whole little bit of technical despair, but we're back now and ready to go once again. So, getting set up into this, we're going to be seeing just a uh, hatchery coming down at the natural expansion hatch gas pool here. No, sorry, pool hatch gas. Again, I keep doing this. I'm just so used to saying hatch gas pool. Pool hatch gas coming in from Snoot. So once again, this time he gets two lings out almost immediately, whereas in the last game it took him a little while. So we'll probably see the uh, lings kind of maybe running around the side of the map and probably trying to come in and just sort of hide their way into position where they can work their way through this SCV. So going to be seeing this SCV, just going to be sat here and building. But how safe will it be? So we're actually going to split up his Zerglings, which is maybe just to look for a proxy. I mean, one of the things as well is sometimes on Apotheosis, the Terran players don't like this map a lot because it's hard to push on, etc. Um, although it's pretty good for tank play. But it's still hard to push on. There's a lot of flanking potential from the Zerg player. And so a lot of the times we do see proxy-based openings. But that's what Snoot's basically checking for, I guess. And being safe against with this pool first play. As we set up into this. So a couple of things just going to be moving around. You're going to see this overload from Snoot as well. Just going to be setting up as well. So overload just kind of coming across the map right now. We're going to see this Reaper from Keen going to be going in towards the natural expansion. So Reaper from Keen coming in towards the natural. We're going to see that drone going down to just under half health right there. And Keen going to be uh, going across the map once again. You were counting to a hundred because you were bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, guys. <laughs> Alright, I'm a coffee turtle. Why am I a coffee turtle? What's a coffee turtle? Oh god, I don't even know what you guys are on about anymore. I've lost track. You leave Twitch chat for like two minutes and all of a sudden everything's changed. You've become a meme and people are counting to a hundred and stuff like this. Oh god. Alright, so we're going to step into this link speed. We're going to see pneumatized carapace as well out of Snoot. So, setting this up into game number two. And again, just as a recap of game number one, Snoot said basically the game ended about two minutes after I dropped. And it wasn't really that exciting. He just got to the Ultralisk Cavern. He defended a drop. And then he just attacked and kind of killed Keen while he was trying to tech up into a late game choice. Snoot saying he was even a bit confused with the map pick from Keen, because the way he played didn't really suit the map, it's, he said. So, interesting stuff. As we are going to be seeing these um, drones just coming in, just mining away here. Third hatch going to come down from Snoot on the third base. And again, from Snoot, his playstyle in this series so far has really just been saying, hey, I'm going to play safe, I'm going to play secure, I'm not going to take any risks, I don't have to. I believe that's going to be enough to set me into pretty decent positions throughout this. So that's what Snoot's sort of kind of aiming for throughout this, I think. And just been putting himself into good positions so far, most definitely. You can see this Reaper moving around. Going to hop up in towards the third base. And just going to start uh, doing a little bit of damage onto that right now. So third hatch going to take a little bit of damage here. As this Medivac from Keen going to be heading up north. So Medivac from Keen heading up north. And uh, Command Center coming down in the third base. So this game he goes for a pretty fast 3cc play. Tank's coming up to defend it as well. Just playing a little bit greedy in the early stages of this. Again, down one in the best of five. Just have that loser's match, etc. to play through as well. But, um, yeah, let's see what happens. Again, we just see this Reaper moving around and seeing what's going on. We see a few Zerglings to the right-hand side as well from Snoot. Just uh, looking around the map and just seeing what they can find. Although the drop comes into the main base. Snoot does have a spoke roller here so you can detect the Widowmine straight away. Some Zerglings already on top of that. And the Widowmine goes down without getting off. And the medevac is taking more damage as well, so no wonder Keen continue, uh, immediately just tries to pull this away here. So just tries to pull this away for right from the get-go. And um, looks to see what happens after that. We dropped a few more frames. Guys, the stream okay? We dropped a few more frames. I think we dropped like five seconds of frames or something, but I think we're stable. Again, it was just like the, the router literally just got unplugged as well. I hope that focus lings are going to stream in here. Going to pick up a siege tank straight away, and this is a good little run by from Snoop to start things off. Couple workers killed, three, four... And continuing to rise. We're going to be seeing seven workers killed now overall. We're going to be seeing eight in total. So eight workers killed. Nice little run by here. And Snoot doesn't take any damage from his opponent's drop. Does damage with his run by. He's setting himself up into a very strong position right now. Into this second game. Snoot not messing around at all. Just looking good today. Once again with a carapace based opening. He drops a macro hatch down at fourth base as well. His lair on the way up. Now starts plus one melee upgrades. So he's going to play a bit differently here on Apotheosis. And that's to be expected. It's a map with a lot of run by potential. Ling Bane playstyles are very popular on this map as well. 
It's just going to be seeing the uh, Viking picking that overload off. So that Viking does pick off an overload. The Viking's actually on six kills. It did land before and help out with the Zerglings, which is why it's on so many kills. I don't think they're all overlords. That'd be a bit of a disaster. Yeah, most of them just Zerglings. One overload killed so far. This Viking trying to be a little bit more successful than he really has been up until now. Viking going to move towards the upper right. We're going to see that overload will be under fire here as well in just a few moments. So this Viking again, just trying to see what's up, trying to see what's happening. And some drones coming in towards the 4th base as well. Some drones come in over towards the 4th base. Spire comes down too from Snoot. And again, plus 1 melee. Just about halfway done. Plus 2 Carapace starts up from Snoot as well. Bane's speed is over halfway done. And Snoot just continues to set up into this. 3rd Command Center comes down here from Keen. So, 3rd CC dropping down from him. We're going to be seeing another Marine jumping into another Medivac. And we're just going to be seeing those two Medivacs heading to the right-hand side of the map. So... There's two medivacs over to the right hand side and Zergan is still just moving around the center and just looking to see what else they can get up to. One Zergan to the very far right side just um, seeing what's going on. So a couple of medivacs coming across. This might be a bit more successful than his drops in game number one where again I mean Snoot had good defense in the main base to deflect drops and so just Keen wasn't able to really get much done with it at all. You see this circle is just going to be coming down the right. And again, Snoot just spotting for fourth bases, keeping his map control. He's got plenty of lings already over here. Does he actually have a Bane in there? He does. He does have Bane Speed finished. Yeah, I remember actually talking about Bane Speed now. Uh, we're going to see those Marines lifting up. Queens continue to target down that Medivac, taking a little bit more damage right now. And will be pushed away once again. It is on the way, so he did go into that Spire play. I mean, it's a large map. It's a great map for running around on. And so no surprise that we're actually going to see a little bit of Mutalist play here. But Snoot's not slowing down with his Hive tech either. Hive is beginning. And so it's only going to be a few meters, and he might not even go past kind of the initial seven or so. He might just go for seven, maybe kind of fly in towards those uh, medivacs, shut this kind of drop play down. Maybe a little bit of harassment catches his opponent off guard, because you think about what Keen's just seen. When he scanned the main, he sees a hive infestation pit. The last thing he's expecting most likely is mutalisks here, so he's probably not going to be prepared for mutalisks at all in this game. And that might just catch Keen a bit off guard, so even seven meters could get quite a bit done. Zergan's pulling back as Snoot. We'll have to start morphing in some Balins very shortly just to make sure he's going to have enough to turn this around. I mean, he's got plenty of gas to do it. He's actually going to add on some more meters as well, so getting committed to some more meters. And here we go, Terran pushing onto the map with only really Marines at this point. Only Marines and see what he can do. Look at this, Liberators, Ghost Academy on the way. Well, the Liberators are okay because they'll actually help against the Moodleists as well. But the Ghost Academy doesn't really have much space in this game right now. Ghosts are for when the Ultra Camp really starts to get higher. And we head into that real late game scenario. But that's not happening from Snoot. Yes, he's going in towards the Hive. But for now, he's playing Ling Bane and Muda. And Ghosts don't have a place in the matchup. In fact, Ling Bane is the counter to the Ghosts later in the game. You actually see players going into Bane and etc. Even if they didn't do it earlier in the game. Oh my god, these Marines get caught. Zerglings catching so many of these. And all these Marines taking so much damage. They're all going to fall down here. And we're going to be seeing Snoot continuing to chase. He's going to try and get those Medivacs. I mean, actually, you have to kill him off so much in the middle of the map. Maybe he can fight in here. It won't be easy with these siege tanks in position, in a defensive position. Snoot going to go into the main, and this is what we're talking about. I mean, we just didn't see Keen aware of the middle at all in this game. And so now, already, in the main, so many workers going down. We're getting a couple of Liberators coming forward, but two Liberators isn't enough. And so the meter's going to fight against those. They kill those off. That Viking, as well, goes down from earlier in the game. And Snoot is doing so much damage right now here in game number two. He's putting himself into a fantastic position. And as we're going to be seeing the Overseer getting taken down as well. Lings and Banes are going to come down the left. And so Lings and Banes from Snoot looking to see what's going to be happening. A few more Zerglings uh, coming forwards. So this is going to stream on in. So Zerglings going to stream on in here and just see what they can get up to. Siege tank taking a little bit of damage then does fall. I mean, the thing is, from Keen, he's got a very nice Sim City, which makes it difficult for Snoot to really attack into this position. And that, for now, is going to keep him alive. So, keeping him alive right now, again, the tanks. Tanks aren't kind of the ideal way to play Ling Bane Muda either. They're immobile. They're not very good. You know, they're not as good as Widow Mines. I mean, we used to see tanks against Ling Bane Muda all the time in the olden days. But Widow Mines and so on just become... So much better and so much more mobile to fight against Ling Bane Muda. Obviously, tanks can't do much against Muda's either. Muda's coming towards this fourth base. Just going to deny the turrets for a few moments. Three SCVs killed. Just a little bit more damage there. Ho ho, turret survives on one HP. Snoot with a swarm of units to the right hand side. Looking to see what he might be able to get done very soon. And then back and away once again. So, back and away once again, the Lings and Banes. Looking to see what else they can get up to right now. And just going to be seeing. 
The middle is just joining up overhead. So Mila's coming up overhead once again. You see the Great Aspire starts up right now for Sinister. So going into the Great Aspire here, we see Morling Bane moving onto the map. So Morling Bane moving onto the map and just going to be seeing kind of, uh, well, just more units. I mean, Snoot set up all over the place. He doesn't want to fight in for a while. I mean, he's been built into Ultras. He's got his Great Aspire on the way. You know, his army composition gets better and better. And in a way, why attack into a really well SimCity Terran player when you can just buy time? Obviously, if he sees an opportunity, he will go for it. And maybe this opportunity is now as a lot of units come to the left side of Simon Keen. And that right-hand side base is a little bit more vulnerable to this big lane bay army over here. But again, I think from Snooty, he's just happy flying around, picking off a tank or two, maybe a medevac or so, a couple of marines. Just small little trades that will kind of help him get into better and better positions. We're going to see Ling Bane and Ultra thinking about moving up that ramp, then thinking twice about it. Liberator's going to siege up once again. A couple more ghosts will join in towards the third. We're going to see these Lings streaming in once more here. We're going to see these rocks are taking a little bit of damage too. As here we go, big fight starts to happen. Snoot, I don't think, will run through this and actually just killing off the rocks. Is going to just kind of slow down the Terran from being able to fight through this. And so just cleaned up some of the production. The Ghost Academy is under fire as well. And Ghost Academy is going to end up uh, taking quite a lot of damage there. Ghost Academy falls. And that's something which Keen will have to rebuild. And so actually rebuild some of his Mutalists. So rebuild into Mutalists, which is interesting. With the Greatest Fire finished, you might think he'd go into some Corruptors now and start building up in towards Broodlords. But that is not going to be the case here. 13 minutes into Apotheosis and Snoot is running around Keen in circles. You see a little bit of a Ling attack in towards this planetary fortress, and again, they just don't see the army ready for King just yet. Oh my god, Bane is connecting on SCVs as well, and that is good. I mean, Liberator setting up will help to defend against the army overall, but Ultras are still doing damage over here, and well, the Meteors do a bit of damage as well. That's 37 workers killed in this attack by Snoot, and now the economy of Keen is hurt, and Keen, I think, has to turn into aggressive mode. I mean, he's down so far in economy, he does have one strong army, he could maybe even max out. But he's going to have to take one very good fight and then decisively move forwards with that advantage. Because otherwise, he's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Ling's mid is joining up together. As here we go, big army from Keen starting to move up the center and looking to see what he can get up to. Marine, Marauder, Ghosts and Liberators all moving forwards right now. Ling's mid has a few Ultras coming around as well. And uh, again, just stemming forwards and let's see what happens. Here we go. So just going to fight in. Has to be careful. Those Liberators are stacked up. The mirrors are stacked up as well as, ooh, this is a horrible fight from Snoot. He does not want to fight there. I mean, that's one of the fights Snoot definitely doesn't want to take. I mean, this is when Snoot should be kind of moving out on the map and moving back a bit, morphing in Banes, and then just, you know, group of units here, group of units there. And as soon as his opponent moves into this position here, boom, attack here, attack here, attack there, attack there, you know, come in from all angles. But that was just kind of one of the worst fights he could probably take on Apotheosis, so Snoot has to be cautious still. He hasn't won this game yet, despite the damage which he's done so far. That army of Keen is still very strong as... Oh, I like this, though. Moving forward to the Mutas. Getting rid of a few of the Liberators. That's three of them going down as they siege up. What a great start. Marines going to move forwards again, and Ultra's going to be coming in here and just pushing these Marines back. Liberators are sieged in position. There's a few Ghosts coming in. The Snipe's coming down. It's not that many Ghosts, though. There's only four of them. Killing that Ghost Academy definitely slowed that Ghost production alongside the lack of economy as well. And actually, the Transfusers keeping the Ultras alive, so Ghosts... They've expended their snipes, a lot of them. There's a few left, but not really enough to get rid of all of these ultras. And Snoot here with a couple of corruptors at the front, just doing a little bit of damage. Keen slowly poking forwards here, and Snoot will see how far forwards his opponent goes. Here he goes, actually going to move forwards right now. There's only four liberators in the sky, so it's not that many. The ultras crash into the left-hand side, the Ling Bane to the right is going to connect on a few more of these units, and Snoot is just going to clean this up, and very convincingly is looking to take a 2-0 lead in this series. A couple more snipes going to go down. That's another ultra that's fallen here. And another couple of snipes trying to come down. But the ghosts get damaged. GG is called. Snoot takes the 2-0 lead. And he looks fantastic here today in the ZVT. He really, really does. And introduce our players. We have to the upper left side our blue Terran from Team Afrika. Let's see if he can start to pull this series back into his favor. Down two games. It is keen. And down to the bottom right is going to be our Red Zerg player from Team Liquid. Let's see it, guys, if you're cheering on Snoot. Okay, guys, if you do enjoy the games today, well, there's plenty of things you can do to support both the stream and the tournament. For the tournament and the players specifically, you can head on over to the Match Arena page, exclamation mark Match Arena, and you can donate into the prize pool, which goes, of course, directly to the players. No fees taken by me or anyone. Match Arena take a very small fee of what you donate, but a very, very small percentage. And... So it's a great way to support the tournament and support the players as well and help us to get more kind of uh, support in the future. 
And of course, that helps Macharino make up for the kind of the initial investment of coupon codes they give out as well. They basically add a hundred dollars to this tournament too, so it's uh, it's nice from them. It's it's a good system. So yeah, um, you can head on to Macharino page to donate and support the tournament. If you want to just support me as a streamer, well, the follow button is there. So you see when I go live in the future, you can spread the word, tell your friends that we're live. We're trying to hit two thousand viewers today. That's our goal, and we're well on the way. Fifteen hundred viewers coming on up. Looking good, looking good. So that's all happening. And um, also, you can, if you really want to subscribe to the channel, you can follow, uh, you can donate, you can Patreon. Lots of different ways for you guys to support. Uh, we just sent out a sub pack slash Patreon replay pack the other day. So um, if you want to kind of uh, check out a sub slash replay, um, uh, if you want to get the sub pack, about 300 matches from there from Leifeng Cup, so Bjorn. Uh, SGL Cups, so Carson, Mirin, there's, there's loads of great players in the replay pack. So if you want to get your hands on that, I'm still giving out the August replay pack to any new subs and any donators who want to get their hands on it. Guys, we are just going to be seeing here the Zergling Speed starting up right now from Snoot. So Link Speed is on the way. I'm just going to be seeing this gas mining away right now from our Zerg player as well. So again, he opened pool first and Snoot's just playing this series safely, saying, well, this is a good map for Free Rock Reaper. I'm just going to open safely once again and make sure that I don't take damage early on or minimize the damage I take early on because I'm very confident in the mid slash late game and that's just how I like to kind of, you know, so I just want to make sure I can get there comfortably time and time again. Nematized Carapace is starting on up. Link speed is just over halfway done and I'm just going to be seeing a couple of queens joining up towards the front there. A couple of Hellions on the way out from Keen as well. And we do see that Starport. Just coming up here from Keen. So Starport just coming up from Keen. Again, there's a couple of Hellions joining up at the front. And they're going to start moving out onto the map as well. Maybe in a moment or two with this Reaper. Maybe. Question mark, question mark. Perhaps. Possibly. Go, 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 go. I mean, Medivac's on the way up as well. We might even see an Armory dropping down very soon here, soon here from Keen and turn this into a bit of a Hellbat attack. There we go. There's the SCV. So Hellbats are going to be on the agenda here on Frozen Temple. Well, Snoot, he's been playing fairly safe in his openings, but he hasn't really been investing into early Baylor nests and things like that. So, I mean, as he scouts in, he does have Carapace, uh, Numatized Carapace, and ooh, he doesn't get far enough in to see the Armory, though. He's got another Overlord at the front. He sees this setup. Is that going to be enough to tell him what's going on here? Because he hasn't committed enough to see the Armory. Does he recognize that this is going to be a hell bad attack, potentially? Medivac with two Marines inside goes across the map as the Hellions are coming across as well. Here we go. Again, set up and ready to go. Spinecrawler starts from Snoot in his natural expansion. Queens will join up towards the front as well. More Lings on the way out, but this will be a very difficult hold without Banelings or something else a little bit beefier here to kind of help against the Hellbats. And here we go. Hellbats start to morph in. Queens will come to the front here straight away. Nice grenade though, and actually blasts one of the Queens right into those Hellbats. A few Lings committing in already, but I just don't think Snoot has very much here still. That Spinecrawler will finish here, and Transfusers are available. And that will help Snoot out a lot with his initial DPS. One Hellbat down, second Hellbat about to fall, and a third behind that as well. So this is Snoot starting to hold on. That Spinecrawler comes up just about in time. And maybe it was a mistake from Keen to commit over here. If he'd gone to the third base instead, well, he could start to pick this away. There wouldn't be a Spinecrawler in position. And that might just be the big difference now. As we see, the Queens will come over. And with a couple more Queens coming to play, a couple more Lings on the way out. I actually see this sort of becoming a little bit more favorable here for Snoot. However, Liberator comes into the natural and Snoot's Queens are all the way over towards the third base. So that will be a little bit of damage done. And so, not over just yet. Uh, this attack from Keen, he's still going to get some damage in the end. And hey, he actually kept a lot of his Hellions alive, which could be used later as part of his composition. Or just part of kind of a run by, maybe Mahalian drops, Hellbat drops even. There's a lot of ways you can use those. So while they're not the most useful of units and you don't usually see them in the mid game, it's not like he did no damage and lost everything. He did no damage and he lost a couple of Hellions and that was it. So kept the Medivac alive as well, which is really nice and really difficult to do as well, usually because the Queen's one of the first things they want to do. The first thing on the agenda is to target down the Medivacs and to stop the healing, etc, etc. Spinecrawler are going to be moving towards the front here. A couple of overlords starting to head out from Snoot as well. So a couple of overlords starting to head out. And this overlord here from Snoot still as well. Trying to see what's going on. Trying to see what's happening. Lair is on the way now. Rotor is starting to build as well from our Zerg player. It's just setting up into this. Plus one, plus one on the missiles coming on into play. And again, a couple more Hellbats are... Uh, coming out as well. So a couple more Hellbats. And we've seen here these units from Keen. He's going to go for a very aggressive follow-up with this Hellbat Marine Force. Stim is going to be finishing in time for this. So very aggressive follow-up right now from our Terran player. And this is one way you can definitely use those Hellbats if you keep them alive. 
Soon it has five roaches building. Is it going to be enough? There's a spine crawler at the front. There's plenty of queens. Although, where are they right now? They're spread out all over the place. So, Snoot doesn't really see this attack coming just yet. You can see here that Keen is just going to pull back for a moment or two longer before committing forwards. And, well, oh, there you see Creeper Trim is starting to come forwards. Now, Snoot realizes. And now, Snoot has to join up together. This uh, spine crawler will start taking a lot of damage. The transfusers have to be poured onto it to keep it alive. The lings will come on in. The Hellbath splash damage is doing a lot. Though, the roaches and queens. Look how many queens there is. And look at this spine crawler, it still survives. It tanks so much damage here. By Snoot the time to get more units into position. And Keen's attack is not gonna work out. Another stim, he'll continue to try and push this back. But man, there's so many queens. Them transfusers just keep the spine crawler alive for so long. And that is just going to be really, really crazy that it's just gonna be seeing this army. Well, Snoot is just gonna keep on pushing this away. Another set of marines stimming forwards. Queens have to pull back again. Another spine poking away once again onto that Hellbass. And well, I mean, what now? We're going to see combat shields finishing soon. Plus one has just finished before our Terran. But plus one plus one has just finished from Snoot. So he has the upgrade lead. Uh, infestation pit on the way down. And our Terran player has to do something. He's just two base all in him. So he has to make something happen at some point. Otherwise, he's just going to lose out. You know, if he doesn't start getting some momentum somewhere in this game, he's just going to be finding himself getting o 3 in this series. And that is not a fun way to start off your group stage. These few units around the back now from Keen can try and head in towards the main base. They're going to be uh, starting to unload here as well. And just seeing what they can do, Marines starting to stim and fight against those Queens. A couple of Hellbats in the front of the tank, but just look how many units there is from Snoot. A couple of Corrosive Bowels have come down to force this away. And Snoot, while not in the best of positions here to fight, is going to keep on cleaning up and he's going to push it back. And that is going to be those Medivacs. Just unable to do anything. However, drop towards the third base and Keen starting to use his multitasking now to gain advantages. There's five workers killed, so sort of a, all of a sudden he is starting to get stuff done. And he's also joining an army together in the center. In fact, the third base still under fire here. Queen going down, and finally the roaches come in to respond. You see those getting lifted. And you know what? I really would have liked to see Keen just lift up this factory, uh, factory on the reactor and put on a tech lab. If he'd be making some tanks here against this roach base army, I actually would have feel a lot more confident about his two base all in. But as it stands right now, he's still making hellbats, and I'm just not sure how much they're adding on to the composition when he's playing against a roach based army, you know? Gonna be seeing these marines unloading again, and even just another queen kill here could be important. I mean, less transfusers, or even just using up more transfusers can be very frustrating, as we see. Coming up this ramp, the spine crawler, which just does not die, still does not die, finally it goes down. Man, he could have killed about 5,000 spine crawlers in the time it's taken him to kill this one. As we see, Keen committing on in. Can he take this fight? He's not trading badly, but he's not really trading well enough either, I don't think, and he's gonna start being pushed back, and yeah, now there's just so many roaches and ravages and queens as well from Snood. Medivacs keep on falling. And so much about this build order from Keen is about momentum, and well, Snoot just was kind of a, a kind of a brick wall when it came to the momentum of Keen. He just has to type out GG, and Snoot is going to take this series three games to zero.